I said that I would get an 8 core Ryzen processor at 3.4 GHz. And I did. Right now, here in my system, I have the Ryzen 7 1700X. It goes for about $399, and it, it's an 8 core Ryzen processor at 3.4 GHz. Disclaimer I bought this with my own money. Unlike the 8350 that AMD sponsored, they didn't sponsor this one. If you want to see more about that 8350 they sponsored, go check out my personal rig update up here. But no, here I bought myself the Ryzen 7 1700X, along with an MSI X370 Gaming Pro Carbon motherboard, and 16 gigs of Corsair Vengeance LED RAM, which you can kind of see here. It, it looks very nice. I, I can already tell you guys, it looks so nice. I'll have the um, personal rig update up as soon as I can, but um, I'm actually going to complete uh, do a clean install of Windows after I'm done with all of this. I've already deleted most things off of it, and I've messed with Windows too much. But anyways, like now I'm having things with storage and whatnot. I'm going to get the personal rig update as soon as possible, and you can see me install Ryzen into my system. But anyways, um, for the cooler, there's... A somewhat limited selection of coolers at the moment. Luckily, AM3 coolers with the latch mount are still compatible, as I mentioned in my Everything We Know About Ryzen video, which you should definitely go check out up there. Um, if there's a custom mount, though, AM3 coolers will not work. It's only the latch, AMD's latch mount that still works. So my old Wraith cooler, I put it back in. I'm working with AMD to get the new Wraith, the Wraith Max cooler with the uh, RGB LED ring. I think that'll be really cool. Um, so I'll keep you guys updated on that, but without further ado, let's get into the benchmarks of the Ryzen 7 1700X. So all of these benchmarks will be using the three processors, the 1700X, the Core i7-5960X, not the 6900K because I don't have access to that. My friend's personal rig actually has a 5960X in it, so that's how I got access to that. And I'll also be using the F AMD FX 8370 that AMD sponsored me. Did I say 8350 earlier? I meant 8370. That's the one that AMD sent f to me um, to use while um, to use while I waited for Ryzen and also to compare about Ryzen once I got it. So yeah, I think this is a good comparison. I get we get to see direct competition from Intel at the eight core level, and also see how far AMD has come with their eight cores. So, I'm not doing any gaming benchmarks because, you know, you guys already know the optimization, blah, blah, blah. And I don't really care. And it was not really easy for me to swap out the GPU between the different systems. It's I'm working on a tight budget here, guys. So, these are all productivity and content creation benchmarks because that's what's most relevant to me. So, I have four tests, and these are not the same ones that I did for my laptop test. For my laptop benchmarks on the AMD 7th Gen APUs, which you can check out up here. Um, these are completely different, much better tests than just Ida64. So first we have Cinebench. The FX8370 got a score of 612. This is just multi-thread, I didn't do single thread here. The Core i7-5960X got a score of 1525. So that's almost triple, between double and triple the score of the 8370, but it is $1,000 as opposed to $170. And the Ryzen 7 1700X got 1525, the exact same score as the AMD chip. So, no, the exact same score as the Intel chip. So $1,000, $390, you get the exact same thing when it comes to Cinebench. Other tests tell a different story. CPU-Z, I did single-threaded and multi-threaded tests. So in single-threaded, the... FX processor got 1219, the i7-1771, so pretty big difference there, and the se Ryzen 7 actually got even better with 2196. That is actually quite impressive. In terms of multi-threaded, the, the FX processor got a 7707, the 5960X got a 15... 154.25, so 15,425, so over double the performance in multi-threaded applications. And Ryzen, even better, 
18,143. CPU-Z seems to really like Ryzen processors. But of course, these are just synthetic benchmarks and they are, well, I think they are pretty accurate, especially Cinebench I found is very accurate. Um, I'm talking about real world applications. They're not real world applications. So I did two tests using Adobe Premiere. I exported one video in 1080p, the CES recap video, which you can check out up here. And then also the video on what we know so far about Ryzen, which I would tell you to click up here, but I've already told you and YouTube doesn't let you put a card more than once. But you should still go check that out. So 1080p CES recap video, the 8370 got, took 11 minutes and 40 seconds. The i7 took, got seven minutes and 14 seconds. And the Ryzen processor got seven minutes and 35 seconds. So 19 seconds more for Ryzen. But that's a very small margin actually, when it's like seven and a half minutes. And it's still really good. And still less than half the price. 4K paints a different story though. It took 15 minutes and 37 seconds on the FX processor for 4K. I mean, it's understandable. It's a $170 processor. It's going to take a while for 4K. The i7 did a little over half the time with 36 minutes and 43 seconds. And Ryzen beat it with 30 minutes and 16 seconds. So that's six and a half minutes, six and a half whole minutes. That it that is better on the AMD processor that is less than half the cost of the Intel processor. I could export a 4K video and a 1080p video in the same time it takes to export a 4K video. I'm mean, approximately it's gonna be a little more, but in about the same time it takes to export that single 4K video on the Intel processor, which is again over double the price. So conclusion time. Ryzen is amazing. It is exactly what I expected it to be. It is on par, if not better, and occasionally, but that's kind of rare, slightly worse than the Intel counterpart at significantly under half the cost. I have no regrets with this decision whatsoever. It is uh, incredible. I mean, it looks incredible. You guys are going to see some more sexy shots with that um, personal rig update. And yeah, overall, I'm very happy with this purchase, and I'm very happy Good job, AMD, two thumbs up, foot thumbs up, four th all my thumbs up. I'm just really excited and really happy. So hopefully, once I get my storage situation figured out, I hopefully should be able to be doing more videos in 4K. Because, I mean, it only takes like half an hour to export. Back on my quad core, it would take half an hour to export 1080p. Now I'm getting that with 4K. Oh, how far I've come. But I'm just rambling now at this point. Anyways, if you like this video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe too. Don't forget to check out my other videos. I have videos from CES. You can check out my playlist here. That video I made on Ryzen, very interesting. And also AMD's New Horizon event where they first announced Ryzen. Hopefully I have enough cards left that I can put that up there. If so, click up there for that. But yeah, you can also follow me on Twitter to get the latest updates. Actually, as soon as each of my parts came in, it was on Twitter, so you guys can see latest updates there on Twitter. It's at Solid State Tweet. And also check out my website, SolidStateBlog.com, for all the written reviews. So if you have those three platforms covered, then you've got all the latest and greatest from me. Anyways, I will see you guys in the next video.